Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, I promised you eye candy, and when I promise, I absolutely deliver. Today, we have with us one of Nollywood's finest, an actor and a producer, and it's been a while. You know, he, he likes to torment us on Instagram with food, but today I have the opportunity to torment him on the set, and I'll try not to put him on the spot. We have with us A.E. Nawigwe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for joining us. You, you like to torment me. us with food. It, Lazy it's, soup, uh, to be it's, precise. It's a passion of mine. I almost did that today, actually. You just said. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking is my is my hobby. I you love, cook? Yeah, I love to cook. Native food. Okay, what's your number one thing to cook? Soup. What soup? Uh, I find it, I find I think I kind of feel like uh, soup is more about getting the stock right, and then every other thing is the added thing that makes it w what it is. You know, like the leaf determines what it is. But if you have that main. Hmm. The heart of it, the, the, you know, the stock. Look at uh, uh, sorry, oh, Chef. Are you also a member of the Sweet Boys Association? I have not uh, received any... They said we should run away from guys like you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you running too? Okay, women don't want to be in the kitchen anymore. Women want to work. And then men are, are, are holding it up on their own. Are women run away from them no, too? No, I'm not running away what from do women want? I like, actually, I always like people what that do women want? in the kitchen. Yeah. But thank you very much for joining us. Let's thank go you. a little serious. When we started the conversation today on the show, we showed a video of men who were being suppressed, men who had talked about the fact that they can't remember when last they cried, and we did a video. So I'm going to pose that to you. We live in a society where men are taught to be strong, to be firm, don't express your feelings. And today's World Mental Health Day. So how would you say that this has affected you as a man? When last did you cry? Um, when last did I cry? That's, I have a personal side to this. Uh, but it was just me figuring things out for myself and uh, hiding from facing the realities of life in the moment as it happened. There was a time in my life where um, everything got to me. Everything that should hit a person would get to you. But I felt like uh, it always distracted me from productivity. So I kind of learned a way to self-manipulate, to kind of like, you know, turn off the lights in my head to what I want to think about and focus on the things that give me happiness or thoughts that bring me joy. You know, and that went on to the point where, by default, that became me. I became almost insensitive as a person. And um, uh, if someone there would die, I would just say a line or two, life is for the living, we'll all die someday, and we have to really move on. And there are people that I have to be there for. So mentally, if I focus on this, it will keep me down and take me back a couple of weeks to recover. So no point. Then, boom, the light is off. So uh, that went on for a while. Then... I had started acting, but it wasn't. Uh, it was just something I would dabble into when I had time. It was more of a passion that I would pursue, and not something I would. Uh, I was pursuing full time, you know. So uh, when I got back into the flow of things, you know, to get back into acting as a career, I, I realized that my sensitivity had gone. So when I had to really get into the space where I had to release certain things, it was hard to unlock. So I had to go back to work on myself to start to feel again. And uh, doing that, I also got to get back into the space where I had matured into appreciating that, look, it's okay to feel. There's nothing wrong with crying. And it helps ease off the pressure. It helps you go through the emotions and you move on. I'll teach my sons to cry in the moment because bottled up uh, anger, bitterness, whatever it is, sadness, always comes crashing down eventually, which for a lot becomes a depression. Brilliant. Okay, interesting. Now, you mentioned that acting was something that you used to channel into as a passion and not necessarily as a career, and then, boom, you became a very renowned actor here in Nigeria. Tell us about your journey through the Nollywood industry. What has it been like? What would you say are your top successes and the top problems you have faced so far? Top successes? Uh, I'm not, I've not really been very calculated with uh, my moves here. I'm mm -hmm. one that I works from a place of uh, feeling and, you know, I listen how I feel about things lead me to the next thing and they always show me why I felt the way I felt. You know, I've always followed my heart through through it. So it's been an adventure. The challenge is, uh, or the major challenge will be the inconsistency. Initially when you start, you're never sure you're good enough because sometimes you see some people doing stuff that you like, wouldn't really call acting, but they're in the sense successful. So, uh, and because I didn't really go to, uh, I didn't study theater. So I didn't come from a technical place. I came from, I just, stumbled upon this when I was trying to self-discover. And it took me, the, the bug bit, and I decided to pursue it on my own. So I honed my craft, read along the line to grow. You know, so, and the way I was molding my own brand or my own uh, craft wasn't like any way uh, conventional, I'd say, because I was just focusing on how I felt about communicating truth for every character. You know, so my challenges are, are way different from other actors that pursued it through the normal path of auditions, rejections, I have faced a few. 
auditions for me I, I don't like as an actor, but I have to because it's the process, because of how I also uh, function as an actor and the things I, I, I function from and what brings the believability to, to me and makes it easy for me. You know, uh, my peaks. Uh, um, I don't, I, I'm not sure anything feels better than being in a position to be used as a vessel to communicate a uh, human angle to situations in the society. Mm. You know, there are a lot of things that are in conversation, but no one will come out and say, yes, I've experienced Even mental health you speak of, we are only trying to sensitize people about it now to come out and accept and own it. People are dying every day, and they're all in our faces on Instagram looking fly and sleek and, you know, sleek yeah. queen and sleek kings, you know? You know, so um, being able to be in that space where I can become whoever it is, to, sh to be the human as an example, you know, as a vessel to show, look, this is what we are talking about and this is how it, it, we should, you know, resolve things on, or this is what people are going through and bring that angle is, I think, is, a, is, a, is the biggest blessing for me. Now, speaking about biggest blessings, one of your blessings of 2018 would definitely be Wedding Party. Yeah. You did amazing in Wedding Party 1 and then you had to be the lead in Wedding Party 2. Let's talk about the audition process. I'm curious. What did you do that got you that role in Wedding Party? I think Grace got me that role because if I, if I told you how many times I did not see the email, audition email while I was filming in Badagri, I was doing a film called Hire Man, and I, for two, three weeks I, I didn't see the, the, the email Wait, sent to me. You, they sent you an email and for two weeks you didn't see it? Yeah, to come audition. And they went through the process and eventually I saw the email and got a call. And then I was fortunate that it was, I wasn't seen as being a diva or being unserious. I was given a chance to audition, and I went for the audition. Give us, give us a vivid explanation. What, what happened? You know, what did they tell you to do a monologue? I'm yeah, um, it was. Uh, um, uh, there was a, an excerpt from the uh, from the script. I was asked to try. You know, we. I think all the guys tried every uh, day two between Donzo and Dossier. And what, what's funny is Dossier was the guy, but kind of like I found myself more. No, so, you know, um, I could have done dossier and carried it well too, you know, but when it, be, it was not so, I was still happy. And to, some, to an extent, I kind of had a sense that um, this was a film that was going to go as big. They, the guys behind it were trying out a model that worked, but I was confident, maybe because my money was in there, so I was, the fear didn't becloud my, my process of thinking about the project, you know. So, but you know, investors, when, before you invest big, you have your concerns, you have your fears. So it was something we're all putting our hearts to as a labor of love to make sure mm. it worked. And the synergy, I think, is that love and synergy on set with all those greats and all egos boxed in to make it happen is one huge factor that people uh, may not know because you weren't on set with us. But I think that really gave it the right energy to push it to the kind of success it is today. Okay. Let's speak about let's speak about something quite touchy, but something very important. That is sexual harassment in the Nollywood industry. We've seen Hollywood have their Me Too movement. Bollywood too has had their Me Too movement. Not only have women come out, men have come out as well. Terry Crews, for example, he came out and stood in front of senators to tell them exactly what happened to him when he was sexually harassed. How prevalent is sexual harassment in our Nollywood industry? It's a global thing, should be told. This just happened because. Uh, something went wrong with Weinstein. Weinstein had been, had been a beast the mm. whole time. He'd been a monster. And no one, I mean, there are angles to it. You know, I mean, like, there are people that have evolved, women that have also evolved from a time where it was okay to them because they were trying to get ahead to a time where it's time to speak. The world is about women being empowered now, so it's time. And uh, trust me, it's, the fire is going to spread. Uh, but the, what will slow it down here is we are a reflection of our society. Every arm of Nigeria, every person in Nigeria, every branch of Nigeria in any, in any way is an arm of the top. It's, it's like a reflection of the top. Nollywood, if you say Nollywood is mediocre, if you say whatever is mediocre, it's from the top. Look at our political system, look at how ridiculous things are, are going on, and yet we, we are getting by, right? So uh, it'll have to start from the top, and uh, reorientation as well. Somewhere it'll, I don't know where it'll happen, but it's happened a little bit in Nollywood, but I mean, it was... Hush, hush. It was the shrouded with something else that is more acceptable, but there was a bit of that Me Too somewhere from what I, I figured, you know. So, uh, in its own time, it will. I Maybe mean, you but it's, it's decide to tell a story about the Me Too movement. In it's it's going on everywhere. It is going on everywhere. A lot of um, a lot of uh, organizations in Nigeria now, beyond entertainment, have uh, foreign backing and investment, and a lot of big organizations own seven small companies here, 
and that is how it's getting in because if anything breaks out here, it affects the face of their their their, their conglomerate, or you know, and they won't take that chance. So if they ever hear anything like that happening under their watch by maybe a head here in Africa, that is how it happens. But we may not hear it because it's not a big deal because it's still a man's world, even though it's shifting in Africa. It hasn't shifted completely like it has in the West, where there's some level of balance in uh, with rights and everything, you know. But we we always catch on, and with the uh, with social media, new media, everything is making the world, you know, everything is happening faster. Influences are happening faster, you know. Women are becoming more empowered now and owning their voices now because they could just tweet and set up, set fire blaze. People will take them very seriously. Very seriously. Exactly. Let's look at your career as an actor. Before you stumbled, reports have it that you stumbled into acting. That wasn't the original plan. But before you found your way on that path, what was the initial path for you? And if you weren't acting, what would you be doing? Um, it, truth be told, uh, the initial path was just get a degree and get into business. Get a degree in what? I was studying economics in school. I wanted to study account, accounting. My dad said, oh, no, economics is, you know, we'll be more respectful. I'm like, is he or a degree? <laughs> but you see, he convinced me and I went ahead, you know, but I just knew I was just trying to get a degree. I hadn't discovered myself. It was along the line, but my third, second, third year, I decided to have a sense of uh, self-discovery, you know, and I dabbled into acting and it felt like I was at home. Prior to that time, I started modeling and in a week or two, I had become so exceptionally good at it, I got it better than people I met there. And I was prior to the time, shy of public appearances, you know, but that kind of like unlocked the other side of me in a time where I was trying to understand who I was and then acting to go around. It felt like something that had a lot more, a better lifespan and what I could actually create something out of. Than okay, so now what's the plan B if you weren't acting? If I weren't acting, yeah. I would own um, a really big business. I would, I'd be, I'm, a, I'm a very physical person. Things, I, I would like to move around. I won't sit in an office. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like routines either. Like wake up every day. Go, come back. Do you have a gym routine? It'll kill me. Because you defo's gym. That's yeah, I, I work out, but you see, the nature of my job doesn't let me stay so, so so consistent with it. Like, if I have all month, I will work out every day. If I have all every morning, every month, I would work out every day, uh, minus Sundays or Saturdays, you know. But uh, sometimes, a lot of times we travel, so it takes me a while to get used to my new environment before I tie in workout into it again. So I do as much as I can when I'm um, in my base. So that when I'm not, I'm still in form until I get back to it. So I have a way. Yeah. Uncle, question. So yeah. for people like me that <coughs> don't like going to the gym, I have zero motivation to gym. What advice do you give us? Because every human You're being should gym. You're beautifully yellow just the way you are. Aww. See, this is the oh, issue. So <laughs> this is, but everyone needs to gym. We yeah, all need physical. Yeah, but I mean, like, physical. the truth is you don't have to do what I'm doing. You know, I have grown at this. You know, it's become something beyond how I look anymore. Mm. It's just that thing that gives me that mental, mental. mental balance. You know, I don't feel like I'm right if I'm not active. You mm. know, I don't push, get the blood flowing. You know, so you can just do basic home, you know, dips here and there to keep yourself in form and do power walks, take a stroll in the evening, you know, long distance walks and everything. You don't have to really do the whole fit oh, fun I'll thing. I'll do 25 sit-ups in the morning and maybe like You 10, start, some, 10 start somewhere. I, mean, <laughs> I work out a lot. I you go to the gym. I want to be What's this one doing? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. You came here to laugh at us. <laughs> I walk into my room and I walk out of my room. I so have finished. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's I don't know what physical that's activity. <laughs> Let's talk about your current project. I hear you're on set now. Yeah, oh. I just got off set. I was working in Atlanta, uh, The American Dream, uh, with uh, Michael Blankson. Very interesting uh, character he had been, I must say. Yeah, so um, that went really well. Gave me a chance to see Atlanta as well and meet new talent uh, across across uh, the so world. Yeah, you, delving into Hollywood, Hollywood, hopefully. For me? Yeah, you've been, you've done I've some done international quite, yeah, I'm, well. I'm here because I choose to be here. Yeah, I also have American King coming with Akon. That's the first quarter of next year. Brilliant. It's coming out with his next album. It's, uh, it's some kind of fusion. Uh, so the songs from the album make the sound score, pictures from the film. There's, uh, there's something being cooked Isn't that for exciting? that. Yeah. That is very yeah, exciting. So I have two American, American Dream, American King. Uh, yeah, That's it's interesting. Huge. Maybe the, the universe is saying something. It's about time. American Wife? No, 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 maybe. I'm finished. Uh, <laughs> American, American, American career. <laughs> I need to ask you. I need to ask before we wrap up. You, just had, time, you just had to ask. No, yeah. I don't know. I just need there's, to ask. there's no ring on the finger. No, 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 no. no, no, no. We, we need to know this. Even women are wearing these days. There are many. There are many. Usually, society puts pressure on women 
to get married at a certain age. Mm. Oh, you've achieved so much, you've done so well. Why don't you get married? I mean, I get this question I, I'm under every the same day. pressure every day. Too. Exactly. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you feel the pressure and how do you handle it? Um, I feel the pressure, not because I, I, they are throwing pressure at me. It's just because I feel like I, wanna, I, want, I want it too. But, oh, but I, won't, I, won't, I won't do it by their terms of mm. it's time. I'll do it by my terms of, wow, this is a chance at happiness mm -hmm. with this one. You get what I mean? So until I feel that way, I don't think there's I any need to, to go and frustrate anybody's child yeah. with <laughs> man issues. You have Should we sense. Ask because respect? Yeah, what's your spec? That's a ver we need to start uh, no, asking I all of our male guests that question. I don't know how to answer those kind of box questions because yeah. yeah a lot of things they love awesome things about humans that you may not see the first time second time you find the third time so Very there's well yeah yeah sometimes so I your mean, spec is in the character of the person to, to a great extent i mean a beautiful gorgeous drop dead f physically perfect spec with a bad attitude i don't even want to stay close back. i don't want to i don't even want to be in the same space to i don't want to get to know you enough mm. to have to deal with you <laughs> <laughs> you know so yes to a great extent but of course in everything yeah we like some visual appreciation as well too so interesting interesting ladies but and then, we all also should know <laughs> when to not be so fixed on whatever we I don't, I, I don't think i don't think physical i don't think physical appearance should should have that much emphasis these yeah. days i, I think, think yeah. what physical appearance or sometimes mm. it attracts you to the person but the person's character then keeps keeps draws you, you in and keeps physical you appearance it depends on what you mean is it the well, the standard today of perfect makeup and contours mm -hmm. that tomorrow you see the person you don't know the same person you were last night. How do you make up all that perfection and the No, I mean it's tricky things. because I've met a lot of people that I've seen on Instagram and I meet them and I walk past them and they're like, oh, I thought you used to respond to your fans on comment. I thought you knew. I'm, I, people that I've met on the red carpet and I see them next time and they think I'm snubbing them. No, I just don't recognize you. Do you understand? <laughs> it's the real. It's a fact. You're not wrong. It's yes. truth, and they think because of what we do, they feel like ah, that's how people are. People just like to form that day. You just wanted to make me feel good. Like no, you genuinely did not register. Because it's the makeup that's Because the hair makeup, you know, takes away everything. It could look good. I'm not saying it's bad, but a lot of times it throws people off. It like for me, it takes a while. It takes a good conversation, and a few other you know good moments with a person for the person to register and stick. Hmm. Otherwise, Olive, I think this is a conversation we need to have because yeah. even today, Eunice at Twitch, you did that's running for president, came on Instagram to state she posted a picture with a full face of makeup and she was like, Kappa, I'm so tired of doing all these rounds where they're asking me to put on so much makeup. I don't like wearing makeup, etc. So trust me, Olive and I are going to bring that conversation to you. And we will not limit it to makeup alone. We'll talk about the whole artificialness that is yeah. fashion, beauty, and, and lifestyle, girl. Social we'll media, cover it in one. But for now, we would go on a break. We went to Lagos Opens and so many things happened. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Thank so you. Would that be all? That would be all. So they can follow I you made, on Instagram I made it. at a <laughs> underscore yinna. Yeah, a underscore y i n n a. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.